Here we are. Next day. All the paint's been sprayed out. Uh, black wheel well. That's coming in very well. Anyway, pretty dark. Uh, old man emu front shocks are in. New brake lines are in. Anti sway bars back in. New bushings, of course, everywhere. All right. Test drive and getting it all muddy. It's a drift mobile without a bed on it. It takes a little quarter inch thrust of the pedal to cut it loose. I was on the road, got it back on the road yesterday. Look at the front ends down a couple inches at least. I haven't done the measurements yet, but of course you're gonna add a flatbed. You're gonna put four or five, 600 pounds, depending on the design, into the back of it. So I'm gonna be putting a bit of weight, but old man Amy's springs aren't gonna compress that much. So once I get the weight calculated in the back end, I'm gonna to go to the front end and, and figure out how much I have to raise it. Yeah. Old ball joint and new ball joint, believe me, it's uh, three trips to the three trips to the parts store to get what I think is the right one. Um, slightly smaller cap, but that shouldn't matter. The circumference should be the same. I'll measure those off. Uh, the whole pattern seems to be the same, and overall the height seems to be the same on them. So, all right, cleaned up. The dry fit worked with the old bolts. Holes lined up. New ball joints in place. Didn't seem to make a huge difference, but they weren't that bad to start with. Hard to tell. Help with the alignment anyway. All right, now down into the engine. Stud's gone on the header, completely gone. It's popped out years ago, created exhaust leak. This stud and this stud over here. It's a Doug Thurley header. The rest of the studs either came out or the nut came off, which I'm gonna have to get double nuts as soon as I get everything out. I'm trying to take the air recirc smog stuff out of the way 
to get to it and I've realized that underneath here, up into here, a fold that has been loose for some time and uh, is missing bolts. It's amazing it runs as well as it does. Here's the header manifold. Uh, header popped off the head, uh, loosened up the gaskets, obviously burning around here from previous leaks. Um, the air research hose I've taken out, uh, disconnected the oxygen sensor. Uh, I'm going to loosen it down here so I can pull the entire head out, clean this surface very well before I put the new gasket in and the block off plates which hit these ports here. Air recirc line, which used to go right in this area, has come off. Um, it attaches to this port here, which is part of a vacuum chamber coming off of the, uh, the air supply, the main air cleaner right there. So if that's not needed, I'll plug that off. This is the this is the air line, the air research hose that Doug Thurley provided years ago. Uh, hooks into this element that runs around the the back of the engine. Up underneath the intake manifold, hits into this port, into this box, um, which is that hose I was just talking about that goes from that uh, chamber up into the air intake air filter. So essentially it's drawing air in and you can see the carbon buildup. It's attached by these two holes or these two brackets or these two holes. And that seems to have come away long ago. No telling how long it's been just hanging around there. But of course now we have that whole area free in there. Uh, do need to plug up that one hole. The teardown continues. Uh, the head's completely off. I took it off of the uh, exhaust line down there. I've got four studs left. Two came out when I removed the head. Two blew out years ago, causing these exhaust leaks that you can see the charcoal area around here. Um, not ideal. And over here is the head. It's a uh, Doug Thurley try, try Y header, three Ys, one, two, and three. Uh, the exhaust has been leaking for a while out of this port right here, and in that area, and over here as well. All of it was fairly loose, so that needs to be cleaned up and attention paid to the surface. Uh, these gaskets obviously aren't going to be reused. They've been burnt for years. Um, the air research system is out, so I'm going to be capping that off uh, as that was leaking and, and just loosely hanging in the back of the motor. And a few little items to clean up, but overall not in terrible shape. Uh, going to probably sandblast this and work on the header a bit. I don't expect it to last forever, but when it goes, I'll probably replace it with an LCE. But so far, so good. Here it is with the headers off and I've cleaned up these surfaces the best I can. Um, scrubbed them down with some emery cloth, uh, coarsed and fine. Get as much of the carbon buildup off as possible and I put a double knot on a stud and I run it through all the holes. These two are loose. I've cleaned up the threads with Q-tips and a little pick tool as much as possible. Um, but running my little test, just chasing it through, these two are okay, but fairly loose. And down here, these two are very loose. Um, I would say, put them in the very loose category as I can just simply thread it in, but I can still thread it in. So just a little bit of wiggle there on the thread. So what I'm thinking is I don't need to get wild and get a larger, coarser thread and cram it in there. 
these two blew out. Um, actually, I think this one blew out and this one blew out um, eventually. And I found a lot of the studs very loose. So I'm thinking that they got loose to a point, probably backed themselves way out and then popped the final amount. So there may be some good thread left down in there, um, which I'm gonna clean up. I'll probably uh, just torque it down and see if I can get to 10. All right, here's the dry fit. Very loosely put in a couple of the studs. Uh, these bolts go in. This is a block off plate for the uh, the air return that I pulled around. Checked with uh, tech supporter Doug Thurley. It's it's all right to use a light amount of thread lock in these these studs here. The ones that I'm concerned about that have a little bit of play. I uh, can't know if you can see that, but that one there and that one there. I have a slight amount of concern about because they blew out previously and that one there has a return that goes around through the top of the cylinders and you can't see it very well but it's similar to that it has a return tube return port that comes in through that tube and feeds into the header so there's a secondary you got the four main you got two secondaries one there and one over here here it is with all the bolts in place the block off plates in place for the air intake. I put new new nuts on and I double washered them right there. All right, tighten back down. Everything tightened back down now. Um, the one that I was very concerned about was this one here. And I was st stripped on the way out. Uh, the threads weren't great. Uh, I did get it to 10 foot pounds into the block or into the head to say and I torqued it down to 30 foot pounds all everything else went to 33 but at 30 as I was creeping up on the torque I felt like that was enough anymore would be dangerous I'm happy with 30 uh, everything else is at 33 all right the uh, headers are back in getting it back together Seems to be starting fine, running fine. Must have had all the vacuum lines back together. Take a look. I can't find any leaks. Everything seems to be seated in all right. Another problem that keeps coming up again and again on this truck and most of them the master clutch cylinders leaking making a mess of the firewall and dripping down on the inside carpet this goes down to the slave cylinder on the transmission that's also leaking in here I cut away a lot of the pad which is soaked with brake fluid and now is a little wet from washing it down uh, cleaned it the best I can up inside there and prime it up uh, with some Touch it up with some rust preventative stuff and call it good. All right, the next day, the primer coat that I put over top of the treated area where the brake fluid leaked uh, seems to be dry and nice, even though it's not a dry day. All right, master cylinder in, new firewall painted up, topped off with fluids, new slave cylinder, flush the lines, uh, bled it all out, works great. Just took it for a 45 minute test drive and it runs like a champ.